Welcome to ESPN's continuing coverage of the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. An absolute postcard day from South Williamsport. There it is, the Little League Dream Factory. Memories are made here. Eight teams from the U.S., eight teams from across the globe. Day number one in the books from yesterday. Four games played. Four more to be played today, including a look our first look at the defending champs from Japan. Just a reminder, Little League played by kids 10 to 13 years of age. Games are six innings in length, the field two thirds the size of major league ball fields, and it is Little League baseball. That means everyone gets a chance to play. Hello again and welcome back to South Williamsport. So good to see you again, I'm Jay Crawford. A terrific day yesterday marred by a little bit of rain in between one of the games, but everything came off without a hitch. And the best was saved for last. High drama in game number four. And let's recap on day one action. And it was filled with some individual performances that stood out. East Smith Pineda with a three-run homer to power Panama past Mexico 10-2. And how about Ryan Harlos for New York? A terrific day on the hill and a three-run homer as New York advances to the second round without a loss. Australia used a no-hit performance from Clayton Campbell through five innings as they beat Italy 3-1. to one. And Robert Carroll, the walk-off winner in the nightcap, knocked in two runs to beat Oregon by a 3-2 margin. So let's take a look now at the way things stand after one day, four games in the books. Four more to be played today. We'll get our first look, as I mentioned, at the defending champions, Japan, and also the West region representative for the United States from Chula Vista, California. California and the West region has had more success here at the Little League World Series than any U.S. region. Let's get you going for game number one, Canada and Japan. To get it started, our first hello of the day to Dave Fleming, Kyle Peterson, and Marisol Castro. All right, Jay, thanks to be great to be back with you. Thanks for sending it over to us. We're here at Volunteer Stadium. What a beautiful scene it is in our first game of day two. It is Canada and Japan here on the international side. Dave Fleming alongside Kyle Peterson. And we heard Jay talk about day one and all the action. Great individual performances. We saw spectacular defense. We had a walk-off win to end the day. Now day two starts. And Kyle, we get our first look at the team that has been the powerhouse here. Team Japan has been so dominant these last few years and our first glance at them here in 2016. You know, we ask all these kids every year, what's the one team that you want to play? And so often they say yeah. Japan. In fact, the vast majority do. And the reason is because of the run that they've had here recently for the last six times, Japan has won this Little League World Series. So you just get the feeling that every time they roll in, this is a club that potentially can do damage because they've done so much recently. They rolled through the Japanese National Tournament, scored 56 runs in four games. You know the competition was very good there, so it's a team that can score runs in bunches. Yeah, the guess is that this is going to be another yeah. powerhouse Japan team. So the challenge is huge for Canada. They have not had as much success these last few years here in Williamsport, and yet they have a guy on the mound to start their first game here in Williamsport who was very, very impressive to get here. He was great. I mean, it, sometimes when you come into this tournament, especially game one, you just need that ace. And it seems like that's exactly what Canada has. The run that Loretto Siniscalci had through the Canadian regional was pretty amazing. One hit allowed in 14 innings. For a lot of those six games he was in, he was pitching at the back end of the bullpen to close games out. Today, he will start. They're going to go with their best against one of the teams that has been the best here recently at the Little League World Series. So our first chance to see the defending champs, Japan and Canada, will try to take on that powerhouse team. First pitch from Williamsport when we come back. Didn't we 
World Series is presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Cereal. They are great! And in part by the Odyssey. From Honda, official vehicle of Little League, and Kubo and the Two Strings, rated PG, in theaters today. All right, here we go. The kids are enjoying their stay so far, and it's still very early in Williamsport. The Little League World Series, day two in our matchup to get it kicked off on the international side. Canada and the defending champions from Japan. Well, the team from Canada, Hastings Community Little League, and a lot of support has come here to Pennsylvania. That uh, Little League located in Vancouver, British Columbia, which has become a great hotbed of baseball talent. It's a big city, 121 miles north of Seattle. Great place to live, great place to visit, and great place to play ball. And the kids are ready to go. Let's meet the team from Canada, brought to you by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Hi, my name is Nicola Barba, and my favorite player is Josh Donaldson. Hi, my name is Nathan Clegg, and my favorite player is Mike Trout. Hi, my name is Sean Coventry, and my favorite baseball player is Josh Donaldson. Hi, my name is Antonio Cusati, and my favorite baseball player is Dustin Pedroia. Hello, my name is Stefano Dasasso, and my favorite player is Andrew McCutcheon. My name is Liam Lewis, and my favorite baseball player is Justin Morneau. Hi, my name is Liam McLean, and my favorite baseball player is Marcus Stroman. Hi, my name is Aaron Mack, and my favorite player is Josh Donaldson. Hi, my name is Anthony Portolato, and my favorite player is Josh Donaldson. Hi, my name is Matteo Ripley, and my favorite player is Dustin Pedroia. Hi, my name is Christian Centarelli, and my favorite player is Marco Estrada. Hi, my name is Laredo Sinescalchi, my favorite player is Bryce Harper. Hi, my name is Lucas Saracci, my favorite player is Josh Donaldson. So that's the team from Vancouver, British Columbia, and they do, they have a lot of fans and they are very vocal. They were singing the national anthem before the game. This is the kid that they will face wearing the very honored number 18 for Team Japan, Rin Ikimoto. Yeah, we've seen that so many times with the ace for Japan with that number 18. We'll talk about the significance as this game goes on, but for Ikimoto, this is a, a Japanese team that when you talk to their manager says they have nine different guys that he's very comfortable throwing out there, but Ikimoto has been their best. And it could be a slightly different look I mean, you mentioned the depth that they have on the pitching side. We have seen the team from Japan come to Williamsport before with a powerhouse ace pitcher, and it might be that they're a little deeper than usual, yeah. but maybe with that, without that uh, sort of lead guy who they try to get on the mound in every important spot. Yeah, the depth was the, thing, the one thing they'd really talk about, not just in the mound, but all the way around. I mean, not as many runs that we've seen in the past, but kids that can really put it in play. What a scene from Volunteer Stadium, day two of the Little League World Series, and we get it started. Antonio Cusati, the catcher who hits leadoff, left-handed hitter against Ikemoto. And the right-hander with his first pitch of this Little League World Series, missing for ball one. Very deliberate motion. And there's a called strike. Thirteen years old, Antonio Cusati. We see a lot of catchers who are top of the order type hitters in the Little League World Series. And both of them in this game. Two catchers leading off in this matchup. Pretty interesting. Oh. Two and one. Our home plate umpire Robert Zepeda, who is from Texas, part of this all volunteer Little League World Series umpire crew. There's Robert. Hard hit ball back up the middle for a leadoff hit. That's a pretty encouraging start for Canada. Patience at the plate, too. I like the way that entire bat went for Antonio Cusati. He gets to see a few pitches, works it to a 2 1 count, gets one right down the middle, but he drives right back up the middle. A short swing from the left hander, and Canada's got their first base runner on. Right away, putting a little pressure on Ikimoto and Japan. Alredo Sinescalchi, who we will see on the mound. Kyle talked about him and the great run he had in the Canadian Regional Tournament as a pitcher. But he's also one of their very best hitters. Another lefty batting second in the order. Oh. 
Kyle, I think you talk a lot about how for these kids who wait and think about this moment, their first chance to play in Williamsport in front of the big crowds on the big stage, the early moments of these games can be nerve-wracking. I think the biggest thing is just to try to get your mindset back to where it is during the regular season. It's so much easier to say than it actually is to put in play when you get it. But once the game starts, first guy of the ball game gets a hit. Now you got your big boy up there hitting. You start to relax a little bit more as a team, too. Moreto is 13 years old. He's 6'1". So he's one of the bigger kids here in Williamsport. He takes a strike. Dirt. Rosati takes off and he'll make it into second without a throw. Impressive early start for your leadoff pants. We get a leadoff base hit, then the ball in the dirt. It's a great read by Antonio Cusati, the runner over at first base. Watch that secondary, which you can't leave until that ball crosses the hitter. But Cusati immediately, when he saw the ball down in the dirt, didn't wait to see if it got away from the catcher, was just off and headed off to second base. And the catcher, Jazawa, did a pretty good job. Nothing he could do. Three and one. And a ball hit through into right field. And the stop sign at third. Now the ball overrun in right field. But Kuzani had already committed to stay. And a little disappointment over there at third after the ball was misplayed in right field. That did allow Sinescalchi to make it to second. A good swing and it's two good swings. You got lefty lefty to start this lineup. It's hit well to right field and just played a little bit, but you could hear around got microphones all over the place. You hear Kusabi coming around. It was turn, 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 and I think he thought that he was being held up. Still, I think you take two singles to start the ball game if you can, and you get two on, nobody out. Well, and part of the challenge when you play Japan. Four championships, the last six League World Series, undefeated in their last 23 openers yeah. in this event. is kind of overcoming that mental challenge of, man, this is going to be the powerhouse team. Koji Yamashita, who is the manager of this team from Chofu Little League in Tokyo. And I think his message was just relax a little bit, playing tight early on, which is not surprising. But an opportunity for Canada to get off to a tremendous start. Nicola Barba, the shortstop and third place hitter, takes outside ball one. Big kids now. They do. 6 1 hit in second. We'll see him on the mound and now Nicola Barba at 170 pounds. Okay. On the outside, good pitch. One, one. In Ikemoto, the starter for Japan. Oh, and it's hit softly to third, and the play is coming home. The slide, he's out. And I was surprised he called him out. Beautiful execution. Moria, the third baseman, made the throw home, took a risk. Now we do have replay here in Williamsport. Let's see. That front foot might have just hit the front part of the bag. If the front foot hits the front corner, watch it front foot. Does it hit the front corner before the tag gets down? Yeah, he's I think safe. it does. He's safe, and I think we'll get the. We got an early challenge here. Challenge in the first inning. I was a little bit surprised that they sent him. With nobody out, a lot of times in a situation like that, you're going to force the ball to get through, but they take a chance. And, it seems like this challenge will go the way of Canada. If so, they've got to run it aboard with nobody out still here in the first. And it's hard to execute much better than Japan did. Yeah. Yujiro Moria, the third baseman. Good throw. Great tag by Jozawa, the catcher. But they are challenging. So we have a replay official down below. 
watching all the angles that we have. And they have to have enough evidence to overturn the call as it was made on the field, but I think they do. I think this is going to be a run. Yep. No, I, I, I agree with you. We saw it from up here. I thought he was out. When you slow it down, it looked like that front foot. It's the front foot as it gets there, and then watch the glove. It looks like the front foot just hits that front corner of the base, closest kind of pointing down towards third base. Does a good job, too, of keeping his feet down. A lot of times that front foot will hop up, but that foot is definitely on the plate. He's safe. So how about that? Canada has the first run of this game, and they are set up for more than that. And the excitement of the kids from Vancouver, who I think already were just minutes into this game, but I think they believe. What a great start for Hastings Little League. Still nobody out, first and third. And the left fielder, Sean Coventry, another 13 year old, pretty big kid, showing a bunt. But he takes a ball. Now the runner broke for second. The throw was cut off by the pitcher, Nicola Barba. And maybe Canada just was seeing would they dare throw to second with that runner in third? Base run it so far for Canada. He took the extra base in Escalchi on the ball that he hit to right field. And then this time, seeing if they can get a throw through. If so, they'd try to score. Not a bad alternative to have your third hole hitter standing at second base with nobody out. Now we got a long way to go. The last time a team from Japan lost their opening round game was 1965. 2 0. And what a great scene it is. And I, I guarantee a lot of these folks who are stopping by to check out this game maybe split time between Lombardy and Volunteer are thinking wow we got a ball game still in the top of the first inning a swinging strike one but it is packed here at Volunteer the base hit could make it a three run lead. Komodo's pitch. Pretty good cut. Like these swings we've seen so far for the kids from Canada. Two singles to start, then a ball that scores a run, and that one on a 2 1. If you're looking for something you can really handle, it was a good pitch for Sean Coventry to go after. He put a solid swing on it just a tick late. There's not an empty seat in this park. Like it. Pretty good way to start a weekend here. 2 2. On the ground to third, and again, a break for home. The throw, the tag, and this time they got him. Sinescalchi tagged out at home for the first out of the inning. Well, uh, they dared him to try it again, and Moria very boldly made that throw again. Watch how quick this transfer is, too. We've seen it both times. Yujiro Maria, the third baseman, good job of fielding the ball, then the feet move, so there's plenty of time and momentum to make that throw home. And then Josawa, the catcher, the glove gets out there. That one's dangerous without that bare hand on it because with that front foot coming in, it kicked the ball out. Instead, tag is there in the first out of the first inning for Japan. The teams from Japan are known for a lot of things, but their defensive execution is certainly one of them. That was perfectly done. So still one nothing. First and third, one out. Liam McLean, the hitter. Foul ball for strike one. But again, with nobody out, were you a little surprised that the runner was breaking for home plate? Yeah, I mean, kind of your, your general rule is with nobody out, you see the ball through with one out. Ball on the ground, you see the ball past the pitcher. Worked out one out of two times. I mean, both of those probably would have been outs otherwise. So Canada taking chances in the first, and it's pushed a run across. Here's the 0-1. Foul ball up onto the rooftop. 0-2. Liam, who tells us part of his pregame routine, he stands at the mirror and envisions hitting a home run. Visualization of what he wants to, to happen in the game. 0 2. 
way outside and again a break for second this time the throw goes down there the tag a little late and the runner at third Barbara breaks for the plate and he will score. How about that the double steal pulled off by Canada to make it two nothing. We saw this happen already once today and the throw went directly back to the pitcher instead now you can see he reaches the glove up and I don't know if he was trying to deke it almost looked like that throw was supposed to go back to the pitcher because I think it surprised him up the middle. Good base running all the way around. It's a stolen base for Sean Coventry. Nicola Barber, the third hitter in this Canada lineup, comes in to score the second run. They've been aggressive on the base pass. Very. A 2 nothing lead, 1 2 pitch, way outside, knocked down by the catcher, but no throw. More aggressive base running on what will be a wild pitch. Rosales having to work so hard behind the plate. A difficult first inning for him. And you spotted it early. Canada, it's very clear their game plan is to be as aggressive as they possibly can. And why not? You're the underdog. Two and two. McLean, the hitter. And he fouls that one to stay alive. I think there's a value, especially for kids at this age, to taking the lead first. When you get to this point, there haven't been that many times you've been behind at any point for any of these teams. Take the lead first in a ball game like this. Maybe you force the other side to play a little bit different than they have. Well, this team from Japan certainly not used to this. In a very tough Japanese region. They dominated to get here. Now ball on the ground is short. And again, the runner breaks for home. The throw, the tag, and he got him. Coventry tried to duck in around the tag. Couldn't do it. Two down. Not too many times in one inning you see three plays at home plate. We've already seen it here in the first inning. One run was able to score for Canada, but two other times. Taking a chance with that base runner over on third base. I understand this one a little bit more. With one out, you try to press the issue a little bit. Throws a little bit off. Did he clip him on the way by? I, 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 it was close. It was. So two down, and it doesn't seem like we're going to have a challenge on that one. Anthony Porcellato, who is the right fielder, left handed hitter, McLean at first base. That one gets by the catcher. Another wild pitch to move a runner into scoring position. Well, what a start for Canada, and definitely not the kind of start that those kids were expecting. We're used to. You heard the Japanese manager go out and say that we're playing tight. A bit different than we're used to seeing the Japanese teams play in the recent past. Strike one swinging. Well, for Japan, I, I, the, you got two outs now. You have a chance to get back in the dugout, kind of limit the damage. There's a long way to go in this game. In for a strike. One and two. Brother has played in the Little League World Series before. Call the ball on appeal, no swing. Close pitch. It's two and two. Takes a little guts to take that one with two strikes. Maybe high. That's right there. Strike three called. But what a beginning for Hastings Little League from Vancouver, British Columbia. Two runs on the board. They lead Japan 2 nothing. Well, just like on the Canadian side, lots of support for Team Japan in Williamsport. And their team is down after a half inning. 2 nothing Canada. Chofu Little League from Tokyo, one of the world's biggest and greatest cities, and a city with a proud Little League history. 
thirty seven million plus in the uh, greater Tokyo area. It's the world's biggest metropolitan area. It's the capital of Japan home of the Imperial family host of the Olympic Games coming up in 2020 and these kids here in Williamsport. Let's meet the team from Chofu Little League. ジョアダチです。好きな選手は伊畑博和です。私の名前は遠藤亮太です。好きな選手は前福田敦選手です。僕の名前は伊賀壮介です。好きな選手は岩隈久志選手です。私の名前は池本凛です。私の好きな選手
Eight of the nine pitches so far have been strikes, all fastballs. And he just had a dominant first inning. And I tell you what, we got a story here in Williamsport. Canada's got a lead, and they got that kid on the mound. Ten pitches, nine strikes, all fastballs, and he strikes out the side to start it. Elevate the fastball for the first one. Little two seamer out of way, and they just bury him right there. Pretty impressive start, from Mr. Sinescalchi. Well, how about Canada here in the Little League World Series? Their first inning, two singles, two runs, three steals, two outs made at home plate, and all kinds of traffic out there on the bases, forcing the action, being very aggressive. And then they watched their ace, Laredo Sinascalchi, on the mound, just blow the doors off of Japan in the bottom of the first inning. And Canada could hardly have drawn up a better start to their trip to Williamsport. They lead 2 0. Stefano Del Sasso, left handed hitter, the third baseman, taking a strike from Rin Ikemoto, who did not have a great first inning. 28 pitches thrown, was a little erratic. Del Sasso, 12 years old. On the ground, not an easy play, and the throw is there in time. Well done by Ikemoto. Like this one, there's a time on the mound where you do have to barehand the ball. It's that one that's not even moving. It's just barely moving. Drive that baseball down into the grass. You can see, and we saw this yesterday too, does not bring this ball back to the glove, or as he does, it's just to make that throw. So everything moving quick to get that ball out. You don't need a full arm swing on that either. Just get it up into that power position. Get rid of a good quick first out here in the second inning. So here's Nathan Clegg. That's from the left side. Second baseman taking a strike. Got a lot of left handed hitters in this uh, Team Canada lineup. Hits that one hard on the line, but caught at third. Good at bat. Two down. Good at bat and a good job by Maria over at third base. I've already seen two good throws to home plate. That time the glove up in the right spot so he can handle that line drive. He's been the center of the action. Yeah. He had to be ready to play today. Here's Lucas Sorachi, ninth place hitter, center fielder. Kind of that closed stance from the right side. Taking strike one. Lucas, who's 12 years old. Strike two. They call him Scratch. For Ikimoto on the mound for Japan. He could use a quick inning, build some confidence. Wanted to. Plus, the pitch count rules, always a factor yep. here at the Little League World Series. We know their staff is deep, but I guarantee you they don't want to have to use a whole lot of that depth right away. Struck him out swinging, and that is a quick, strong inning for Ikimoto. Now the challenge for Team Japan: try to hit the ace of Canada. We'll see if they can do it. When we come back. Dave Fleming, Kyle Peterson here in Williamsport, day two of the Little League World Series, and uh, just getting underway. But a huge crowd already here at Volunteer. A time for our fresh take brought to you by Subway. Kids from Chula Vista back again, and we'll see them right after this ballgame, too. California will play their first game following this. 
Heavy hitters go head-to-head. -head. South Korea has never lost a game here at the Little League World Series. They'll play Curacao in the second international game today. And Bowling Green is back again. Second straight Little League World Series appearance for the kids from Kentucky. Yeah, we'll have that international game here from Volunteer 6 Eastern on ESPN. And as much as we play up Japan, rightfully so, they've been such a powerhouse here. Seoul, South Korea has been here three times before. They've won the championship all three times. They've never lost a game, and they're back here in 2016. Heads up. That one came right to us. Rito Sinescalchi. The hard thrower and the foul ball. See again. There's no okay. way they're catching that. No, no. Hit it that way. Now I got back here pretty quickly. <laughs> and you can hear seams, it's close. Tatsuya Suzuki, the first baseman. And another foul ball. Well, after the way the first inning went, when it was all swing and miss for Japan, maybe a little encouraging that uh, Suzuki at least is getting the bat on the ball against a guy who's throwing very hard. Hard to have a more impressive first inning. Kyle's got the uh, catcher's mid out. Might be a good idea. Well, there's the first look at something off speed. Did he swing? No. That might be a good idea. Might need it. Grab the Flemmer model. Get ready. <laughs> Dial it up. Hit well to right field. But caught right on the edge of the warning track. Anthony Porcellato for out number one. These kids from Canada probably not too used to seeing the ball get put into play very often off of Siniscalchi's 77 mile hour fastball hit out to right field. Good job, too, of Porcellato to find the sun. Got it with that bare hand, shielded his eyes from the sun. And gets the first out of the inning. There's the pitcher Rin Ikemoto. Seventy eight miles an hour on that fastball. And that's that's uh, the big league equivalent with our little league dimensions of a one hundred and one mile an hour fastball. So that's it in terms of the reaction time the hitter has with the 46 foot difference between mound and home plate. There's your equivalent. In other words, Sinescauchi is throwing very, very hard. And he struck out Ikimoto. It's one thing to throw hard, it's another to command the zone. And it's exactly what he's done so far. 17 pitches for Loretto Sinescauchi so far. He's only thrown two balls. One was an 0-2 break of all trying to run out of the zone, but everything else he's just hammered the zone. Two down. Japan still looking for its first base runner. And down to nothing in the second inning. That's a strike. Fastball's been between 76 and 79 miles an hour so far. In a way, who's the center fielder? There's an attempt at that breaking ball. And there could have been a little adrenaline pumping in that first inning, too, for Sinescalchi. Oh, yeah. He's throwing extra hard. Not like he's backed off a whole lot. <laughs> that when he eased in there at 77. One two. Got him. Power pitching from a big strong kid. He's got one of the best arms here in Williamsport. Canada off to a great start through two. They lead two nothing.
Stefano Del Sasso and his teammates are enthused. So are the Canadian fans who have been very loud in these first two innings. And why not? And Team Canada is off to a great start. We're on the international side. Day two of this Little League World Series. So four teams or four games have already been played. Eight teams. The other eight will get their uh, tournament started today. Japan, Canada, and South Korea, Curacao on the international side. California, Iowa, and Kentucky, and Texas over on the U.S. side. So we got wall-to-wall -wall Little League World Series coverage right here on ESPN. Two o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, eight o'clock. Yeah. And this, this, Kyle, would be the surprise of all surprises. A first pitch swing off the glove of Ikemoto. And Antonio Cusati, who got Canada started in the first inning, is on base to begin the third. But Team Japan, they have been the dominant force. This is a different team, a different Little League. But they have been so good in Williamsport that this early score counts as a big surprise. Yeah, I, I would I would agree. And Cusati's on over the second single of the day. Both times tried to go right up the middle. That time just off the glove of Ikimoto, the catcher. So it's another leadoff single. Two of the three innings so far. Canada's had the leadoff man on. Now Laredo Siniscalchi, who had a base hit his first time up, and we have seen him on the mound. And hard to be more impressive than he's been in the first two innings. On the corner for strike one. Team Italy is here. We saw them yesterday. Begin their Little League World Series. Lost to Australia in their opening round game. Ball to strike. It's 0-2 with the breaking ball. And Laredo says his parents have taught him. He, he speaks fluent Italian. So you got to think up in the Grove. There's some conversations going on. A man, a young man of many talents. They set that target well off the plate. And we see Japan do that with their catchers. They've taught that in Little League Baseball for a lot of years. We see it every year here in Williamsport where that catcher tries to steal some strikes. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that I the vast majority of the things Japan does you absolutely love. That's the one thing that I've never really understood is just kind of waste a pitch and especially with a pitch count number you don't want to waste it in it. right back to Ikimoto not in time for the double play they get the lead runner at second well executed by Japan you know, one six three and watch how quick Ikimoto when you let it go now you're a fielder so we got a field at first then got to get those feet turned it doesn't matter where you're throwing on the field if you get the feet turned your body's moving where that throw is it's a much better chance to throw a strike he did it the speed of Siniscalchi was just enough to beat it out so he's aboard one out Nicola Barba who got credit for a run batted in his first time up hit a fielder's choice that was a ball on which we had a review at home play curveball for a strike Nicola, who will also see on the mound here in Williamsport. He's one of the top pitchers. Kind of, they describe him as the innings eater for Canada. Good fastball, 0 and 2. Oh, two. Oh. Well, just for some reference point, I mean, Ikimoto, it's not like he's a soft tosser. 67 mile an hour fastball. At 12. At age 12. I mean, that's, 12. that's still. Go to your average Little League field, grab a 12 year old. They're not throwing 67 miles an hour. No. Oh. Two and two. But it does give you an idea of how hard the Canadian starter, yeah. Laredo Siniscalchi, is throwing 10, 11, 12 miles an hour. Harder with his fastball. And there he is at first base. On the ground, foul. Another 
foul ball. Barba hanging in there. Not a lot of real strong cuts, but he's doing a good job of being a pest. Some tough pitches from Ikimoto. Another 2 2. This one is a fair ball, and everybody's safe. Sometimes you got to get a little good fortune. Yep. Nicola Barba put it where there was no play. That's been both his in this inning, too. Two infield singles for Canada here in the third inning, and this one, you couldn't roll a ball out there in a better spot. Full swing from the left side of third baseman is probably playing a little bit deeper, anyway, so there's no chance that anybody can make a play here. The fields are so perfectly manicured here in Williamsport. Stayed right there. Stayed right on line. It's the one you're hoping just if your Japan catches the edge of that grass and spits it. Instead, it stayed right on line. Not here. These fields are big league quality. Two on, one out. Sean Coventry. Sean reached on a fielder's choice, then started to run wild. Ultimately was thrown out at home plate. Shawnee Bear. Of course. On the ground towards second. And Japan will get the out at second. Shotoku Sato got the lead runner. Two down, first and third. The Little League Grow the Game grant program was created to provide local Little Leagues the resources they need for general improvement and to expand or establish Little League Softball, Little League Challenger Division, and Little League Urban Initiative programs. If you'd like more information, visit littleleague.org slash grow the game. Grow the game grant program. A lot of resources available to help Little Leagues who need it. I love that piece of it. You can be anywhere in the world, log on, and you can get great instruction from a coaching standpoint, learn more about the game. It was apparent, even if you don't know the game of baseball all that well, you can learn more. Little League University. Two on, two out. Liam McLean takes it in the dirt, and it gets by the catcher, Jozawa. That will score a run. Sinescalchi crosses home plate. Now the throw to third, safe. Rod Coventry, we we told you how he was kind of running wild when he got out there the first time. He's doing it again here in the third. This aggressive base running has served Canada well so far. There have been a few guys thrown out at home play, but one scored the first run of the ball game now. And you can see catcher Josawa trying to get that body down, but was I think looking for that fastball to be more elevated instead. Not enough time to get the glove down and the body down. Scoots right under his legs. Another run scores from Canada. And that aggressive base running again from Coventry takes him first to third. Off the right toe of our home plate umpire, Robert Cepeda. That's the fourth wild pitch already thrown, and I, I have sympathy for catchers there. If it's a breaking ball in the dirt, you're anticipating that bounce. If it's a fastball, it's just, I think it's a much tougher play. So another run in for Canada. They lead 3 0. 1 0 to Liam McLean. Good breaking ball. Every run, you figure with the way that Laredo Sinascalchi's looked on the mound for Canada. Oh. Two and one. I'm with you. I, I mean, it's, it's been so dominant through the first two innings. And I think the other piece of it is his pitch count is so low. He's only thrown 21 pitches in two innings. Every one you can tack on makes you feel a little bit better in that. Dugout. Still plenty of time to go, obviously, but he's looking really good so far. Foul ball, two and two. Twenty-three consecutive opening round wins in Williamsport for Little League teams from Japan. 1965 is the last time they lost an opening round game, and they're in trouble today, based on who's on the mound. Almost hit McLean and another dash for home plate. Another run for Canada. 
four nothing. Would have been better off for Japan if it had hit him. That's the fifth wild pitch in the first three innings. Trying to go back to that break ball and the, the strikeout count was trying to drop that breaking ball over 2 2 instead. Let it go a little bit too early and you're right. Yeah, if he hits Liam McClain, the runner's still standing on third base. Instead, Canada adds another one. 3 2. Foul ball. Two more runs for Canada. Well, we don't, we don't want to undersell this Canadian team. They obviously have a lot of talent. All-time Canada in the Little League World Series, though, 1-12 and 12 against teams from Japan. Last time they had a winning record, a Canadian team in Williamsport was 1998. Four. Ball four. It's a two-out walk. So the recent history, and by Don't recent, just off. the last Quick. couple decades would tell you that teams from Japan have dominated, teams from Canada have struggled. And that is not the way this game is going. And I guarantee you, Koji Yamashita, there is a lot of concern over in that Japan dugout. So we're going to get a pinch hitter here. Aaron Mack will hit. Already got four runs on the board, just scoring a run against Japan in these recent Little League World Series matchups going back a few years has been tough. Five games, four runs total. They've matched that already in the first three innings. Oh. And obviously every run is important, but the two in the first were huge. Huge. It just it sets a different tone and then get your guys in a to go out and just dominate in the first inning. And, and the feeling of confidence has to be as high as it can be in that Canada dugout. On the ground towards second, fielded cleanly. They'll get the out at second, Sato to Adachi. But Canada gets two more runs, and all those folks are feeling pretty good about things. They leave for nothing. We've got a big story brewing here on the international side. Our Honda game summary. Team Canada against the Little League that's been the powerhouse in Williamsport with a 4-0 lead. Yeah, they put two on the board in the first, two more in the third. And then since then, Laredo Senescalchi has been fantastic. Two in each pitch, five strikeouts. 21 pitches, and 18 of those 21 have been for strikes so far. He has been dominant. So let's see if he can keep it going. And that is the key number there, that 21 pitches through two innings. First pitch strike, six for six. Almost every pitch he's thrown has been a strike. And a lot of them have looked just like that. 77-mile-an-hour fastball. He's been consistent. Sosuke Igawa, 12 years old, left-handed hitter, the left fielder. Strike two. Just one after another. Yeah. Got him. Another strikeout for Siniscalchi, and we'll welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, Marisol Castro. Hi, guys. Uh, we are here in the land of Team Canada, and we had a chance to speak to the pitcher's dad, Mario, who says uh, he's been playing since he was four. He's been very serious about this game, in part because he used to go to his older brother's game, and you, know, you see these players' siblings during the games, they kind of play on the sidelines. Well, not Loretto. Loretto would study the game intently, and his dad, Mario, says that's probably where this all started. He described his son as a funny kid. He's a kid who really likes to enjoy life, enjoy his teammates, but when he needs to be serious, he knows how to put his game face on, and Mario is watching it, and 
He knows his son has his game face on. He says he's so super proud of him, and he knows that this has been his dream his entire time. And then when I asked him, well, where does he get his athleticism? He said, of course, it's easy. He gets it from me. He gets his good looks from his mom, but his athleticism from me. Spoken like a true early dad. All right, Mary, saw thanks. Yeah, you saw Mario, a proud dad, I'm sure. He'll be enjoying every minute of this one. Oh, two. Well, I don't know if you're looking for glimmers of positive for Japan. <laughs> it's hard to hang your hat on foul balls, but maybe a few more balanced swings. I don't disagree with you. I mean, there's been one ball put into play fair so far. And who knows? Maybe some of the chatter in the dugout. Start to get kids coming up there, sort of knowing what to look for, what to expect. Hard to hard to get ready for it until you stand in. Senescalchi struck out another. Now that's kind of been the story of the ball game so far. Loretto Senescalchi has faced eight guys so far. He struck out seven. All swinging. The fastball has been between 75 and 79 miles an hour. And through the first 29 pitches of this ball game, he's thrown three balls. And he just dominated the strike zone with that fastball so far. That's the nine of nine. The first pitch strikes the first time through this order, too. And for a kid this big throwing this hard, the control has been amazing. 30 pitches to get eight outs with seven strikeouts. There's a rare ball. And one. Shotoku Sato is the hitter. He did ask for an appeal. No swing. It's one and one. 12 years old. And one of the little other kids on this uh, team, Japan, Chofu Little League. Two and one count counts as a rally for Japan. Yeah. It's the first time he's gotten two ball count to anybody. Two one. Well, they're counting on not real hard contact. They do bring the infield in. That's a fun attempt. Two and two. Trying to make it another quick inning with that pitch count, such an important part of this game. A line drive base hit. And wouldn't you know it? Just about the littlest kid for Japan with the first hit of the game. Sato with a two out single. That a boy. Hanging right in there. 76, 77 mile an hour fastball that comes inside. You can see him really short in that swing up, too. With two strikes, choked up. Just trying to get the barrel to it. Big old fist bump when he gets down to first base. First hit of the ball game for Japan. He earned that one. So two down, and that's a base runner. See if that changes things. Jozawa, the catcher. One one with the foul ball. And now we will see. I mean, Japan, this is the second time they've seen Sinaskalchi. Maybe that changes things. We have a long way to go in this game. The catcher. Now runner in scoring position, little by little, with that wild pitch. Yeah, amazing. Even with that wild pitch, he's over 80, 82, 83 percent strike so far. On the ground, a nice backhand play, and out number three. Liam McLean with a good play defensively through three Canada four Japan nothing. Beautiful day day two of this Little League World Series from Williamsport Pennsylvania and our aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan you got to get Direct TV just beautiful shots high up above. We're here at volunteer sort of down the hill. Lomity filling up as they get ready for the first game of the day on the U.S. side.
be California and Iowa for Eastern. As part of the joy of being here for this great sporting event where fans, you, I mean, they're not assigned seats. You, you just get to go where you want to go, watch a game down below, walk up the hill, catch another game, come back for the nightcap. The move that I like is those that went up to Lamedy earlier. The, okay. The, okay. We, we put the blanket out or we, we put the lawn chair out because nobody touches it. And you roll down here and watch this game. When you get done, you go back. You can still sit in the same seat. It's it's a veteran move. You don't see everyone do that. But after a few years, I think that'd be your route. You figure that out. Go <laughs> lawn chair first, roll down the hill, and you go straight back up after this. One. Take me a few years, but yeah, yeah I could get that figured out. And and, uh, and who knows? Maybe you could spray paint your hair. That's right. And you could slide down the hill. Oh. Make it a full week. Uh -huh. We'll see when that happens. Liam Lewis hitting for Canada, and this is this is a big time story here in Williamsport. The way that this game has gone, Canada has a four nothing lead. And that's a strike one and one against the team that is the defending champs. Not the same kids, not the same little league, but Japan has sent powerhouse teams here year after year for the last six overall Little League World Series champions have been from Japan. Canada has had almost no success in their Williamsport history head to head against Japan. And here they are halfway through this game with a four run advantage. Ikimoto still on the mound and a ball hit back toward the pitcher fielded cleanly throws him out. Ikimoto has fielded his position very well today. One and twelve all time. The 1998 team, which was the last Canadian team that had even a winning record coming to the Little League World Series. That's the last time and the only time that they beat Japan head to head. Another pinch hitter here, Matteo Ripoli. Where's number one? Right handed hitter. Oh. Matteo takes one inside. Well, you mentioned how Canada's got some size this year. They got some big kids, especially the kid on the mound. Mateo, 4'10. But they call him the Ripper. Ripper, going to see if he can put a good swing on one here. Yeah, partially with the name, but he does put a good swing on. Hit that one foul. Well, it's the littlest kid for Japan who got there first and so far only yep. hit. Mateo also let us know just in case we were wondering he is ready for any and all interviews on television. Perfect. So you just don't know if you don't ask. Just kind of threw it out there. Two and one. You know what if they get this win they're going to be doing a lot of interviews. Hey Mateo stay on the dirt for me okay. Stay on the dirt for me. This is a polite way to ask from our home plate umpire. That one hit to right center field and a base hit. The Ripper. How about it? The Ripper's got a knock at the Little League World Series. He's very thankful for it. Yes, he is. Pulling those hands in, getting enough of it to shoot it out to right center field and fired up when he gets down to first base. First at bat of this Little League World Series and he's standing on first base. It was a Dustin Pedroia fan. He kind of looked like Dustin Pedroia on the right center field. One step closer to an interview with us. Christian Santorelli will hit now his first at bat of the game. And he crushes one to center field. It's gone. Wow. This is amazing what we're seeing. Christian Santorelli is the last kid of this Canada team to hit today. He's the 13th kid to get in a bat. He's the first one to leave the yard. First pitch fastball dead center field and 
Christian took his time around those base paths. I loved it. He's got to trot down. Tongue out when he crosses home plate. It's two more runs for Canada. The lead now 6 0. Just incredible. They call him Santa. And Santa Claus has delivered. ここここここだねまあしょうがないまあ名前ファサイドなあとはこれ一生懸命やってまずここに慣れようよ試合が来るから今あとはこれ一生懸命やってまずここに慣れようよ試合が来るから今あとはこれ一生懸命やってまずここ
See if I can see if I can uh, beat the Olympian down the hill. You realize I mean, this is on television right now. You can't at this point retract the statement. What do you think my chances of actually doing that? Sinescalchi to deep right, but caught short of the warning track by Endo. Two more runs for Canada, and it's Santa that does it. Christian Santarelli, his first at bat, goes deep to dead center field. 6 nothing Canada, the bottom of four. Well, who knows if we have some future big leaguers on the field in the stands here in Williamsport. So many major leaguers love this Little League World Series. We talked to White Sox third baseman Todd Frazier about his favorite Little League memory. I remember it vividly. I remember, you know, getting the last out as a pitcher and uh, leading off with a home run. I just, uh, I remember striking that last guy out. And, you know, words couldn't express. I thought that was the biggest thing in baseball, and then I finally got drafted and winning it for America. I, I thought that was just the coolest thing in the world. Todd Frazier has been a, an all-star home run derby champ was here at the Little League World Series six nothing Canada you're reading that right as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning here in Williamsport just an amazing result so far still a ways to go so Japan still has a lot of outs to play with but they got to get it going against a guy who has just been dominant on the mound Laredo Sinascalchi right hander pounding the strike zone. 37 pitches in three innings. So Hirao will be the pinch hitter. A rare ball from Siniscalchi. Thirty one of his thirty eight pitches have been strikes. Thirty one of thirty eight on the ground base hit. So the pinch hitter with a nice job. Hirao is aboard. Canada got off to the great start two runs in the first inning and uh, taking advantage of some very aggressive base running red oaks and Scalchi three plus innings seven strikeouts no walks issued Christian Santarelli with the two run homer Japan has gone since 1965 23 straight wins in the opening round in Williamsport and that streak obviously is very much in jeopardy. To Endo, who is the third place hitter, the right fielder, strike one swinging. We have now seen some better swings of the last yep. few times up. The single by Sato, ground ball in the infield, and a single here by Harau to start this inning. On the ground, another base hit. So here we go. I think that's a good observation. Whereas Sinascachi was just really just blowing everybody away early. Yeah, and that time after a fastball, he threw right by him. Now he goes back to the breaking ball. This is a really good job for. A 12 year old kid who's facing a kid 46 feet away from mid 70s to be able to wait back on a breaker ball and hit it to left field for a single. So back to back hits here for Japan to start the fourth inning and their best hitter in Suzuki coming up. He has put the best swing on Sinescalchi so far. No worries, okay? This guy hit you hard last time in the right field, okay? We're going to keep a little more tight on the side of this guy, okay? Don't worry about anything. Breathe deeply. We've got a six run lead. You're pitching great. They're timing it right now. We're going to try to mix it up a little bit, okay? Move that glove around a bit. Doing well. Throw strikes. We'll get out of this. Go. The manager, Vito Bordignon. And some words for his young pitcher. Three of the last four hitters now with base hits, though, for Japan after hardly, really, hardly a foul ball. The first time through the order. Here is Suzuki. Strike one with the fastball. Still mid 70s with the fastball. We've seen him 75 to 78 miles an hour today. Foul ball back into the big crowd here at Volunteer. It's 0 2. Hey, his manager pointed it out. Suzuki does seem to have a swing that's suited to go to right field. And he just missed a home run his first time up. It was a fly ball fairly deep out to right field. Now an 0 2 count. See if they try to bury a breaking ball down of the way or elevate a fastball. Just something to make it look a little different. 0 2. Popped up. 
could be playable. McLean under it for the catch. And that's a big first down for Canada. Well, we're here in Williamsport, day two just getting started. We had four games yesterday, and this is still the opening round Canada, Japan, South Korea, Curacao, California, Iowa, Kentucky, Texas. They all still have to play their first games. This one obviously is underway. After today, then the bracket starts to sort of sort itself out. We have not, since we went to 16 teams, had a champion of the Little League World Series that lost its first round game. 15 straight years. Teams that have won the whole thing one game one, so usually a pretty good indicator of who's going to be there in the end. Ikimoto on the ground toward short. There's one, the throw, not in time, and it gets by McLean. A little low throw, and that will score a run for Japan. So there's one on the board on a ball that could have been a double play. Nicola Barba got the force out at second. His throw was a little bit low. And now it's six to one. Important here to get that lead runner, and you can see the footwork. He's kind of got caught up. You got the base runner coming in right here and watch we're going to go right left and both feet just kind of stay in the same spot on it. I think in his mind he wasn't quite sure if he was going to step on the bag with the right foot or the left foot and then you got a base runner that's sliding in so it made the throw just a little bit tougher. I would assume that this discussion is about the slide. It looked to me like the slide went directly into the base. I don't think the slide was any issue. Bruce Klein, second base umpire. Yeah, I don't think so. We, we, our managers wear microphones, but we do agree not to share those conversations with umpires. They let us listen in on chats with his players. So now the home plate umpire asking for time. We're going to have a special pinch runner. One of the rules here in Little League to help get lots of different kids involved. Jiro Moria will be the runner at second. And two outs here in the fourth inning. Teams can use a player who's not on the batting order as a special pinch runner for any offensive player once per game per player and once per inning per team. Pan figuring hey it's already the bottom of the fourth that that run at second is a huge one as they try to come from behind. Oh and two that's ruled a swing. It's so tough too for these kids I mean you got to get those hands going early because the fastball is so much time trying to hold up and Ito just couldn't quite do it. And as a pinch hitter this is his first look. At the hard throwing Canadian right hander. Gives up a run, but only one. 76 mile an hour fastball for another strikeout at 6 1 Canada. Just up the hill at Lomity, they're getting ready for the first U.S. game of the day. Chula Vista, California, just outside San Diego, a little league that's had a lot of success in recent years in Williamsport against Johnston, Iowa. That's coming up next right here on ESPN. Yeah, so, okay, Kyle, you described how folks put their blankets and chairs up on the hill. Now, time to head up the hill. Get in place. Start moseying up there, but there might be, uh, might be a few more than normal that stay down to watch the end of this one just because of the way it's gone so far. I'm with you. I mean, I guarantee you around this great complex for Little League Baseball, there are people talking about this game, yeah. this score buzzing around Williamsport. Because this one on paper, look, it's the first game on both sides. We, we wait and watch them play till we make judgments, but on paper, this one's a shocker. It is, but then when you, when you see Canada walk out of the field, you see Sinescalchi on the mound, you, you understand that this is, this is a really good baseball team. Not a shock to them. Nicola Barba will lead off third place hitter. And Suzuki, second pitcher of the game for Japan. He likes to use the off speed stuff. To Nicola with a run batted in, a base hit. He's also scored a run. On the ground to second, Sato, one away. Oh, 
Sean Coventry, who's the left fielder, comes up for a third time. Oh, two. So many of these kids from Canada are, for obvious reasons, hockey fans. Ground ball toward the middle. Diving oh, stop. Oh, Sato oh, throw too Sean, late. Stay there. Stay there, Sean. Get to the Great bag. Effort. Get to your bag. Well, that'll Get be a hit bag. for Coventry. Stay there. Smile on his face, and rightfully so. Good little play by Sato off the middle to go backhand. Not enough time because he has to go see so deep to get the out at first base. And Sean Coventry with an infield single there has now been on base all three times that he's come to the plate today. And he likes to run when yep. he gets out there. He has been frisky on the base pass. Sato, who had the first hit for Japan, he's been a really impressive player. Liam McLean up for the third time. On the ground to Sato, kind of a tough hop. He tried to knock it down and couldn't do it. Well, that may be scored as an error, but that was anything but an easy play. And I like the first move from Sato, too, because you, you, you taught to charge this one right away. It was the second hop that really makes it tough. It's a top spinner. So it's going to get to you just a little bit quicker. That one stays down a little bit longer than he thought. But the first step was the right idea to come charge it. The glove of Sato has been very good all day. Right, if you hit the ball hard, and that would count as pretty hard contact. Absolutely. That thing was hit hard. You put pressure on the defense. It is scored as an error, but that was a difficult play. And Mac comes up for his second at bat. Not a shock that his teammates call him Big Mac. Her ball misses. Well, the winner of this game will take on the winner of South Korea and Curacao. Two teams we expect to be very competitive in Williamsport. On the international side, we already had two impressive winners yesterday Australia and Panama. 2 0. Cut by Anthony Mack. Foul ball two and one. All right, you kind of like to see that. You get yourself into a good hitter's count, get a pitch you like, and take, take a, a rip. So many of these kids are hockey fans. So many of them are also Toronto Blue Jays fans, which I find interesting. Vancouver is so close to Seattle, yeah. yep. but it's the, sort of the patriotism, and and they root for the Canadian team all the way across oh. the continent. That's ball four. So it's a walk to load the bases for Canada. We're gonna pitch right Dave Fleming, Kyle Peterson, with you here from Williamsport, and look. Canada's got a great baseball tradition. So many big leaguers who have had great success. And yet in the Little League World Series, it's been Japan that has had all of that success lately, which is why this score, 6-1 to one Canada, seems so surprising. I think it, it, there's an assumption coming in that just because they've been so good in the past that it's going to continue. But the reality is you got a kid on the mound that, that really can change it. That's exactly what Siniscalci has done from Canada. They set the tone with two runs in the first inning right away. Then he set the tone on the mound by striking the side out in the first inning. It's been very impressive from Canada, who's looking to add more right now when we get the Ripper back in the game. The Ripper is the special pinch runner. A very enthusiastic, energetic team from Vancouver. Sasso and he's got a lot of personality we saw him if, if you're joining us late you might have missed it but he led the, the charge before the game sort of the team huddle the chance the cheers 
Stefano base hit center field one run is in here comes the throw the tag and they got him what a throw from center field Rio in a way they cut down a run at home plate but Canada scores to make it seven to one pretty good all the way around so Stefano DeSalso good swing to rip it right back up to me Inf infield kind of drawn in potentially trying to cut off that first run at home plate but anyway charges this ball and throws a strike to Jazabwa the catcher takes it on one hop slaps the tag down but Canada tacks on another one so two down on the throw both runners moved up well, Sasso who gets the RBI single he goes to second the Ripper Mateo Ripley is at third with two outs for Nathan Clegg strike one and we focused a lot rightfully so on the pitching of Loretto Siniscalci he's been dominant but the Clegger and his teammates have swung the bats Clegger Clegger gets a drop I love it strike two it's eight hits for Team Canada in this I mean, remember the, the last five times that they had played a team from Japan in the Little League World Series they had combined for four runs they've got seven already so it's been just an all around performance oh two oh. one and two Tatsuya Suzuki from the windup. Foul ball. Christian Zanarelli, who has a pinch hitter in his first at bat of the game, hit a home run. He's got the helmet on, hoping to have a chance here in the fifth. Clegg having some pretty good swings. Nathan, who told us his little brother, you can always hear his little brother, Zachary, because he's so loud in the stands. I think you could sort of say that about all these Canadian fans. They have made a lot of noise today. That's close for the ball. Two and two. Yeah, they've had plenty to make noise about. First hitter of the ball game. Literally, base hit to start the game, and it has been just rolling for Canada since then. Two two. Fly ball left field. Igawa, and who's going to take it? Nobody. Adachi, the shortstop, Igawa collide. And a run is in, and hopefully everybody's all right. Two runs score on that collision, and I, I that will be scored as a hit, and I don't think everybody's okay. Nine to one Canada, but some concern. And that is the shortstop Joe Adachi who took the worst of that collision. And they just have a bloody nose. This is always at play that as you're growing up is the hardest to kind of learn from a priority standpoint the outfielder has the priority so when the infielder hears it that's when you peel off but so often as an infielder you're going back and just trying to make a play. So you might necessarily hear it because you're looking for the ball the entire time the left fielder Sosuke Igawa was calling for it earlier you see the arms going and he's yelling but I don't think Adachi heard him hopefully that's nothing more than just a bloody nose. 
so we will get a new shortstop for Japan while we have just a moment we were talking about it earlier Little League University provides web based training for coaches umpires league volunteers and parents you can watch videos review practice plans just see some ideas for playing catch in the backyard it's all there visit and join for free at littleleagueuniversity.org a great resource. Well it, it's just not the performance that Japan expected and in some ways that play kind of encapsulates it all. Everything has gone right for Canada and almost nothing has gone right for the defending champions. Last time they lost an opening round game 1965 here in Williamsport and unless something drastic changes that streak is going to come to an end. Well, have we have we picked a shortstop yet. No not yet. We only got eight of them out there. I don't know if they were trying to see if they could get Adachi ready to come back in the game. You would think not. Suzuki, the pitcher, is going to try to stay loose. Well, we're here at Volunteer, day two of the Little League World Series. Aerial coverage brought to you by. Direct TV if you call yourself a sports fan you got to get direct TV. And a great look from up above how just next door up the hill at Lombardy they are getting ready for the first U.S. game of the day. This is still the opening round. It's Chula Vista California Johnston Iowa. California has been the dominant team on the U.S. side six of the last U.S. championships from California and Chula Vista won in 2009. Well, I mean, it's another it's another game that on paper before you see the two teams head to head, you would say one yeah. would be heavily favored. How's that gone in this one? Yeah, this one has not exactly gone according to form. They uh, and and Adachi, the shortstop, he is still in this game, so they got the bleeding under control. Yeah, I think we're going to have a pitching change, though. But we are going to change pitchers, so we didn't do that while we were. Waiting for Adachi to get out there. Now we will make the pitching change. And it's going to be Takumi Ito on the mound for Japan, their third pitcher of the day. Part of the reason, and we talk about how if you win, you have such an advantage to the champion since we expanded to 16 teams, the uh, international U.S. brackets with eight teams apiece have all won their opening round game. Part of the reason why is because you have to play extra games if you don't win and it it taxes that pitching depth. Yeah that's I mean the one thing when you talk to the Japanese manager he does talk about the depth of this pitching staff for Japan so you know potentially they're built to come back and have to play more games. But it's a position that they have not been in in a long time 23 straight times they've won game one so this is something that hasn't happened in 50 years. And I will say this on this side of the international bracket where the next game up is South Korea Curacao two yeah. teams that we expect to be very good. I mean that uh, the loser of this game will play the loser of that game in an elimination game. I mean Japan if they go on to lose this game it's not going to be easy just to survive the next game up. I mean South Korea is the biggest team by far when you see him walk in and we'll see South Korea later on six Eastern here on ESPN. Nick Curacao when you talk to their manager he talks about that you know, there's a lot of recent baseball history in Curacao just how loaded that team is so the winners yesterday Panama and Australia Sunday 11 Eastern right here on ESPN Canada Japan now South Korea and Curacao later on tonight Australia was impressive yesterday they were uh, they had a pitcher on the mound who did some tremendous work. Five no hit innings from the uh, right hander Clayton Campbell of Australia nine to one Canada here in the fifth inning two down and Takumi Ito I guess is ready to go and the, the loser of this game has to be ready tomorrow you can still yep. you can 
see that nosebleed isn't it hasn't gone away entirely. Joe Adachi trying to tough it out and stay in this game. Here's Santa. We saw what happened last time he was up. It was impressive. Christian Santarelli. On his dad's birthday, his first at bat in the Little League World Series launched one to center field. Now the PA announcer's just just using one name. <laughs> he's he's on Ichiro style at this point. He's already reached legendary status. That one in the dirt, and that will advance the runner to third. Clegg goes to third on the wild pitch. The wild pitch has been a theme in this game, that's for sure. That's six of them thrown by Japan. Uh, Akita Jozawa, I mean, he's, I think he's doing the best he can. The catcher. Maybe there have been a couple that he would say he should have kept around home plate, but. A 1 1. 2 and 1. There's Dad. Can he do it again? Well, one thing, it's an unwritten rule, but I would follow it if I were a Christian. If you've already hit a home run, you can't take a call strike three. Let it eat right here. You got to let it fly. And he did. He strikes out swinging. So not this time, but three more runs for Canada. Middle of the fifth, a shocker. Canada nine, Japan one. Out. Call six of Betty. Moreno, Moreno, great job, Betty. Great job. Well, you think there's some enthusiasm on the side of Hastings Community Little League from Vancouver? Laredo Sinescalchi, four innings, eight strikeouts, only the one run, which was scored basically because of an error. He has just pitched great. Santorelli, the two run homer. Japan not lost an opening round game in Williamsport since 1965. So Canada trying to pull off a tremendous win. And the no slowing down for number 24 going 74 miles an hour pitch number 50 in the game. Nine to one Canada bottom five six outs still to go. Takahashi who is the pinch hitter here got a piece of that one it's 0 2. Little dirt in the ear. That's exactly what it was. All right, Robert, you all good? All volunteer umpires, they get to come to Williamsport one time. <laughs> and they hide nothing once they get here. O2. A little outside with a fastball. Now let me ask you this. This is a it's nine to one. So Canada has managed to add on build this lead up with the pitch count rules. Do you consider taking Siniscalchi out of the game strike three swinging. I do after this inning because he's he's already passed. He's already passed the, the point before so you can see once you get past 50. So yeah. now it's kind of free reign until you get to 65 pitches. So I think he let him go through this. Inning to potential go out and face a guy or two next inning, but I think that 65 number is the key one to watch because if it stays at this, I would. I mean, if you get into the sixth inning, you got an eight-run lead. I think I'd take a chance. You got a chance, and uh, that hurt. Tyler Ogawa gets hit by a pitch as a pinch hitter. Welcome to the game. Tyra is okay. He's 
He's got that elbow pad on the front elbow, which usually that's the one if you're going to get hit, that's where you get hit. And this one throwing so hard, you got to open up that body, and it got him on that back elbow. That hurts. Tyra is the youngest player in Williamsport of all the teams. And he does get on base. He's going to stay in this game. Watch, you got to get those hands going early, and you can see the hands going at just his head back elbow. Yep. It wasn't that wild of a pitch, but I think you, the point you make, he stands close to the plate. You got to get started early. That elbow sort of stuck out toward the corner of the plate. One of the great trainers here in Williamsport making sure that he's all right. Are they going to send a special pinch runner anyway? Joe Adachi, you got the bloody nose in the collision in shallow left field on the pop up. He's the pinch runner. Got the Kleenex in both nostrils. We're good now. <laughs> he can come out of the ball game. We did took a little break back to shortstop. Now pinch running. Genki Matsura will be the hitter. Doing a little Ichiro stretching before getting in the box. 12 years old with a big personality. One of the leaders of this team. That one just missed. Ball one. Not a big kid, so maybe a, a little bit smaller strike zone. And Scalchi has not had many of these. Two ball count. Two and one. He hasn't walked anybody. You got Matsura to chase up and in two and two. You don't have a lot of time to make that decision. Full count three and two. It, it, the major league equivalent of that fastball that he's throwing is a hundred plus miles an hour. I mean, it's not that much yeah, different from big leaguers facing Nolan Ryan. This is the first three ball count of the game. For one out in the fifth inning. One out in the fifth inning. First three ball count. So see if Laredo Sinascauchi can find the strike zone here. Three two. He does. Fouled off. 76 miles an hour. Got a little extra on that one. And that is, that's the equivalent of a 100 mile an hour big league fastball. Another 3 2. Another foul ball. Now you mentioned that 65 number with the pitch count. And we'll see. I mean, first and foremost, you got to win the game. Yes. If it's 4 1, 5 1, I think it's a no brainer. When it's 9 1, and it's probably not a scenario that the Canadian coaches are thinking about before this game, is are you ahead by enough and you could take a chance? Well, that's ball four. That's the first walk issued by Sinescalchi. Uh, here we are in Williamsport. It is day two of the Little League World Series, the first game of day two, and we have had a real surprise. Canada, which is 1 in 12 all time against Japan in Williamsport, has a 9 to 1 lead. We're at the bottom of the fifth. California and Iowa following us right here on ESPN. 
They're going to start that game on ESPNU. So if you're looking for California and Iowa, they'll start on ESPNU. And they will throw the first pitch of that game at 4:15. So hang with us a little longer. They're going to they're going to start that game just a little later than scheduled. This is a big story in the Little League World Series. That's ball one. So once he throws this pitch. Now this will be if you wanted to do it this would be the final hitter that he would be able to face if you wanted to save that extra day of rest. So we'll find out soon whether they're thinking about that on the ground into right field base hit around third Ogawa scores it is nine to two still only one out Josawa knocks in the run with the base hit we've seen the last two times up defensive swings isn't necessarily the right defensive but they're just Doing everything I can to shorten the swing up, but the barrel to it just put in place somewhere. That time it's an RBI single for Josawa. Well, we're going to find out here. It's a big decision. Got to play tight here, guys. Hey, eh? got to make some plays in defense. Knock the ball down, get out. Yeah. Can this play here, guys? Heads up. It's going to be. This was going to be too. Nicola, okay? okay? So don't okay? give him a signal or no? So, no, don't give no signal. You go to the bag, you just creep up, okay? Throw it hard to him, okay? Freeze the guy and see if we can get this guy at third base, okay? Keep throwing strikes, eh? Keep throwing calm the strikes on, okay? Defense, defense, knock the ball down. Hey, guys, no, no, no sign. Hey, guys, knock the ball down, get it out. Let's go, let's go. Knock the ball down, get it out. It's the discussion there was really about what happens if they double steal. So if Japan double steals, where the throw would go. Ola Barba, the shortstop, it sounds like they want him to creep up and take the throw coming in towards home play. I think the biggest thing right now is, is just throw strikes count outs. I mean, it's you want to make sure you're just getting outs because there's only five more to go. Strike one to Moria. He's had some good swings in this game. O2. And that runner takes off for second with no throw. So they, they were they were trying to plan to see if they could kind of make a play on the base runners. And then it was one pitch later though. First pitch, yeah. I think everything would have gone fine. But then the Game starts speeding up. Still 0-2. That's all that matters. Yeah, that is the big deal. And they've obviously decided to stick with their starter. Strike three, swinging, two down. Ten strikeout of the day for Laredo Sinascalchi, and this time it's one of his better fastballs too. The finish, what he does when he lets that ball go, was really impressive. He's six foot one inches. Watch how everything is reaching out towards home plate. He lets that ball go. He's probably 40 feet or less away from home plate. So two down here in the fifth. A seven run lead for Canada. Second and third though on a ball hit deep. But foul. Sounded good. Looked good. Just a strike. I tell you what, one swing of the bat here over the wall would definitely ramp up the pressure. Yep. A Warriors fan. Ryota Endo. Oh and two. Strikeout number 11. So one run for Japan, but only the one. They stick with their ace, and that move pays off through five. Canada looking for a huge win. They lead 9 to 2.
beautiful weather here. Day number two from the Little League World Series. Jay Crawford with you from the Little League World Series Anchor Desk. A quick programming note. Game number one from day two on the U.S. side set to begin in just moments from now. It will start on ESPNU. And then at the conclusion of the exciting Japan-Canada game, we'll take over on ESPN with the U.S. side. For right now, though, let's get it back up to Dave and Kyle. One more inning to go, and guys, we could have our first major upset of this 2016 Little League World Series. I mean, it really is true, Jay, and it's hard to say upset when we watch these teams play their opening round games. We get a feel for uh, the strength of these teams here in the opening round, and yet with the history on both sides, the history head-to-head -head in this event, the dominance of Japan in Williamsport these last many years. This score is a big surprise. It's 9-2 to two Canada going to the six. I would agree. It is given history. It isn't when we've watched the game. Correct. I mean, the, Team Canada from, I mean, really from the first batter of the game. They scored two in the first inning, two in the third, two in the fourth, three in the fifth. Nine runs on nine hits for Canada, and on the mound, they've been outstanding. 12-1 and one Japan is all-time against Canada. But they, you're right. I mean, this is not a fluke at all. Kumi Ito, the third pitcher for Japan. That big curveball to Antonio Kusadi. Antonio, who has two hits, has scored a run, and has caught all game long. He's had a very nice game, one and one. You got Kusadi, you've got Siniscalchi, you got Barba. Coventry's had some good swings. The home run from Christian Santorelli. There's some depth to this lineup. Very daring base running. I mean, Canada was so aggressive coming out of the shoot here today. Kind of set the tone for the game. Two guys thrown out at home plate in the first inning. And I think we're totally unfazed by it. Yep. Curveball lined and caught at second. That's Genki Matsura who is playing second base now. Nice play. Yeah, it was off the bat. It looked like this ball was going to get over Matsura's head. But good first step to move back towards center field. So here is Laredo Siniscalchi. One for three. That's not the big part of his day, though. I mean, he has hit the ball hard. He clearly has power at the plate. He's got big time power on the mound. See the look at his face right there. He knew he just missed one. That was a really good swing on a breaking ball that was in the middle of the plate. Thinking, let me see one of those again. He hit one to the warning track his last time up. Ball. This one he crushes. Gone and over everything. What a performance today. Laredo Sinescalchi. 10 to 2. Kind of saw this one coming on the first swing that he took. He fouled it off, but he was right on it. And this time gets another break of ball. And this one not in a terrible spot. It's down and away, but he had seen the pitch three times. Doesn't try to pull it, goes with it. Drives it out to left field. Second home run of the day for Canada. And Loretto Santascalchi has done everything today for Team Canada. And you, you spotted it after that swing and the foul ball. He, he just wanted to see another one, and it was a better breaking ball. But I think he felt he had it all measured up. That one fouled off the bat of Barba, Nicola Barba. Now get ready to go back on the mound. That's legit power. <laughs> on the mound and at the plate. Oh. 
they've ever scored against a team from Japan in the Little, Little League World Series. Oh. Two and one. I think there's a pretty good chance that this is the kid we'll see on the mound for Canada game two. Nicola Barba has been one of their top pitchers. And a kick foul. And just a reminder, they're getting started over on ESPNU up the hill at Lamedy. That's Chula Vista, California against the team from Iowa. We'll stay here with this one. This is a big story in Williamsport. Canada and Japan. Coming in, not the score you would expect, but Canada has been so impressive. Pretty good swing, a drive foul, it's two and two. I, I don't think it would be overstating it to say that this would be a landmark win in the history of their Little League program in that great country. Absolutely. And especially because it's game one. Yeah. And so you, you know that you're going to get the ace from the other side. But they had their ace going and he's been. He's been as good as about any we've seen. So their ace can swing a bat too and it's Laredo Sinescalci. We talked about it a minute ago. The first pitch breaking ball that he saw he fouled off. Watch the body go get this though. It's down and away. His head stays on it. The bottom half goes down to get it. The top half follows. If you pull off that pitch at all, there's no chance. Hey, you're probably not going to make contact, but no way you're going to hit it out. But everything is working to take the ball the other way, and he drove it out. Did he get the ball? I think he did. I think somebody retrieved the ball, and he's got a home run souvenir ball from Williamsport. <laughs> that looks like a reaction of a, I have a home run ball. I love it. So dad asked for the ball. Hey, it's a fan of Canada, so got hey, a Blue Jays head on. He's got a Canada shirt on. I, I, I bet we can find a baseball for that kid. Yeah, I think I, we can replace it. I got one up here. If if he needs one, we can send it down. Because he's got the ball from his first Little League World Series home run. Oh two. John Coventry takes high. John's got a hit, has been on base, has scored a couple runs. On the ground to short, Adachi. Bloody nose and all throws him out. And now the last chance for Japan. And Loretto Sinescalci, who's been the kid of the day so far, trying to finish it out 10 2 Canada. Little League World Series is presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Cereal. They're great! Your time. This is your time, guys. Sacrifice. Take a look around at each other. Sacrifice for each other. Help Loretto do this, guys. Go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Defense, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Three outs to go. Welcome back to the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's of Frosted Flakes on this beautiful Williamsport day. Three outs away for Team Canada from what would be an historic win in this great event. And their fans are ready for the bottom of the six. Ten to two. Canada's lead over Japan. The star of the day has been the kid on the mound, Laredo Sinescalchi. 72 pitches trying to finish this one off, but a leadoff single for Japan. Katsuya Suzuki, his first hit of the game. In Japan, the bats have gotten better as the game has gone on. But maybe too little, too late. 23 consecutive opening round wins in the Little League World Series for Japan. Last time they lost their first game was 1965. 
They are 12 and 1 all time against Canada. Japan, a team that has won four of the last six Little League World Series championships. Canada, a country that has been here more times than any other on the international side, has never won one. And who knows? With number 24 on the mound. Gives you a pretty good shot. Strike one swinging. As soon as we are done, we will send it up the hill to Lomity where Chula Vista, California, and Johnston, Iowa are just getting started. That game on ESPNU, if that's the one you're looking for, they're just getting underway. This year, a giant story in Williamsport with Canada three outs away from a win. Kimodo, the hitter. That one just missed. One and two. Just a little bit outside. Two and two. Got him. With the fastball. Strikeout number 12. The fastball velocity is still there. Started his game between 75, 78 miles an hour. This inning's been right around 75, 76. And this one's what we've seen plenty of today. 12 strikeouts today for Sinescalcho. All 12 have been swinging, and all 12 have been on the fastball. Wow. Against a team that coming in, again, sight unseen in Williamsport, but coming in, you might say, would be the best Little League team in the world. Ball one. It has not played out that way. Canada has been so impressive. Rio, in a way. One and one. Pitch number 80, so that's worth keeping in mind. A butt, first base side. Sinescauchi, the throw, hit the runner. So he's safe. And Suzuki will go to third. That could well be a hit. That's a great idea right there, but the execution is perfect. I think it I should think, be a hit. Yeah, I think it should be a hit. And there's going to be a question, too. Canada's manager is coming out to talk about whether or not he was inside the baseline. He did not look inside the baseline at all right there. I, I think that anyway was doing a really good job running down the base pass. You can stay inside it and take it to that halfway mark, which is about 30 feet down the line here in Little League. But he did a great job of getting on the correct side of the base. That was just a really good button, a tough play. They score that as an error, which tough frankly is just the wrong call. I mean, that's a butt hit. So I personally am going to just. Uh, You're going to write it down as a yeah, single? Yeah, I mean, that's what it was. I mean, that's, that's just putting a perfect spot. Even if the throw hits the glove, he might be safe. I mean, it's not a total guarantee. Well, what it does is it 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 makes the chances of Sinescalchi pitching the whole way through uh, a little less. That is not a reviewable play. It's a judgment call for the umpires, and and and, and they and got the, the call correct. right anyway. Yeah. So one out. We get Antonio Cusati back behind home plate. Sosuke Igawa comes up for Japan. Ten to two, but two outs still to go for Canada. No throw to second. That's one if you're Canada where I think you take a chance. Throw it down. I mean, you will gladly trade an out for a run at this point. Take the chance, throw it down to second base, see if you can't steal the second out. One strike pitch. Oh and two. Okay, now this is the one that makes a difference. Because if it's a ball, this will be the last year of the ball game. If he can strike him out right here, then potentially Sinescalchi has a chance to finish this ball game. 
So this is a very big pitch. 0 2. Got him. Thirteen strikeouts, and now he's got a chance to finish what he started. Dad knows that was big. Yep. Dad's had a pretty good day. So the last chance to keep that streak alive for Japan. Joe Adachi, the shortstop, with two down. Runners at second and third. Ball one with the fastball. Can he dig deep and get the final out? No. Two and oh. Here we go. No swing. Juan Solis, the first base umpire, made that very clear. Strike one swinging. No balls, one strike. Two and two. Japan down to their final strike. Here it comes. Base hit right field. One run in. Here comes the next runner, and he scores. And this game is not over yet. Not only do they score two, it's 10 to 4 on the base hit by Adachi, but they knock the starter out of the game. What a day for Laredo Sidiscalchi. Unbelievable, unbelievable game. Hey, hey, the calls in the good calls enough for you. First off, go get him. Go get him. Go get him. One out of the way. Okay. I heard a "You are the man" call in the background right there. It's the kind of day that Laredo Sidiscalchi has had today on the mound. He was phenomenal, especially early. Strikes out the side in the first inning. The fastball was in the upper 70s. Pitches all the way into the sixth inning against a team in Japan that you know coming in is going to put the ball in play. But the fastball was so good the first time through the lineup, he struck out seven of nine. And then after that, Japan started doing a little bit better job of timing him up. At the plate, he can do this too. Drives a home run out to left field in the sixth inning to extend the lead. So a solo home run for Sinis Goucher. He scored two runs, had two hits. Struck out 13 and pitched into the sixth inning. That's not a bad day here at the Little League World Series. I would say. But he wanted that final out. Yep. He will just swap places with the shortstop, Nicola Barba, who will try to get the final out. And you heard the manager, Vito Bordignon, say so just one out to go. So now, number 19, Nicola Barba, will try to get that final out. And for Japan against the 13 year old right hander. I mean hey the goal is maybe get another couple base runners. Sure. It's a six run deficit but. See if you can't ramp up that pressure now that you've gotten the the guy. Out of the game who is just overwhelmingly dominant. Yeah and as is often the case you don't really care who you see next you just want to see somebody else. It's and no knock on Nicola. No not at all. It's just that's how good that. Siniscalchi was. Today. So for Nicola Barr, but needs just one out for Canada to win game one here against Japan. So I guarantee you the velocity will be different here. We'll see from Nicola Barber. Our first look at him. He's been a workhorse for them. He's pitched a lot of innings getting to Williamsport. Facing Genki Matsura. Again, Japan down to their final out. And a big curveball to start things off. Uh, for the first five and two thirds innings for Japan, they might have seen three off speed pitches. They were seeing mid 70s fastballs. That was a 48 mile an hour breaking ball. It's a little different look right now and not easy to adjust to. Here's the 0 1. Oh. 
There's the fastball down. That's 64 miles. I mean, it's not a it's it's not a bad fastball no. for Little League. He's throwing 64 miles an hour. It's just so different. That's sort of trying to get himself going. He takes that curve, the throw behind the runner. Dachi, who kept this game alive, got back. <laughs> Liam, Liam wanted to keep that tag on. Liam McLean, the first baseman. Two one. The two one. Three and one. Cola didn't like that baseball. Ball four. Japan still has some life. Sometimes that final out can be the toughest. Yep. Hitter Akita Jozawa who knocked in a run against Senescalchi. He's a good hitter. Way outside with the curve. Good stop by Kazadi. Time Kazadi couldn't stop it. Both runners advance. I think the one thing for Nicola Barba on the mound right now, and sometimes it's not easy, is you can't think about missing bats. Just throwing strikes, they're going to hit it at somebody at some point. When you start missing bats, that's when it gets a little bit tougher out there. Just calm down, relax. Eh? I know you're a little bit excited here. I know it's, you know, it's six, bottom of six. Just relax. Okay. Hit within yourself, okay? Hit your spots. Hit your inside, hit your outside, hit the curveball hard, okay? Get that movement on the ball. Go chase, we'll get a ground ball. We'll get out of this. You can do this. Stay focused. You can do it. Make sure you block everything, man. For second and third, you're blocking everything, right? Keep it in front. No more runs. Go get them. Go get them. So let's see if he can calm down here, settle in, get that final out. Jozawa waits and a curve, very high, three and one. Well, he really does not have the feel for that pitch. You can kind of see that that elbow drops and he's trying to. Really make it break instead of throwing right over the top of the ball. Ball four. He's walked both hitters that he has faced. Now you get the meat of the order. You get the middle of this Japanese order. And only a couple more base runners to get the tying run to home plate. Down to their final out, but hang it in there. So here I will be the hitter. Strike one over the outside. Just try to throw that one three times. Nothing wrong with a fastball on the outside black at the knees. Cola Barba with his one strike pitch. That one is high. Still struggling to command that curve. Bases loaded, two down. 
two runs in. Two and one. This is three hitters in a row. And now four where Japan has been down to their final out. They were down their final strike. And Joe Adachi knocked in two, knocked the starter. Moreto Sinescalchi out of the game. That one hit well to left field. And caught in left by Sean Coventry to cap off an historic win for Canada. That last out was not easy. But what a play, their second all-time win against Japan here in Williamsport. Well, a great job by Laredo Siniscalci just to get him to that point. And then for Nicola Barba to where it, it feels like it's, it strike zone just gets smaller and smaller through a strike when he needed to. And a good play out in left field by Sean Coventry. But a, a great performance. Canada scores 10 runs on 10 hits. Gets an amazing performance on the mound and wins game one. Well, a long time coming for this great baseball country of Canada, where their Little League World Series has not had the success that Japan has had. And yet today, Canada gets it done in their opening round game. A 10 to 4 victory. The first opening round loss for Japan. Any Little League team here in Williamsport from Japan since 1965. So very impressive win for Canada. And uh, that means Canada has moved into the winner's bracket. They will take on the winner of South Korea, Curacao. And you and I, Kyle, will have that one just uh, a little bit later today. That'll be a good one. A good nightcap on the international side. Two great teams to finish out the first round on the international side. So what a win for Canada our first big surprise in Williamsport and they beat Japan by that score of 10 to 4 for Kyle Peterson from Marisol Castro. I'm Dave Fleming saying so long from Volunteer Stadium. We'll be back pretty soon. But for now it's California and Iowa up at Lombardy and for the call of that game we will send it up the hill to Carl Ravage.